Now we've been to quite a few military cemeteries, both to do with the Great War and the Second World War on this channel. And today we're at another one, but slightly different, with a different background and some different stories, because today we are at the Ayet Indian and Chinese Cemetery here in France. Now today's video is going to be slightly different um, and transparently because I haven't researched it heavily uh, as I normally do because this video I'm kind of doing on the fly. We finished up on the Somme today, uh, we were due to go down towards Rancor um, for a video which I have <laughs> researched quite a lot um, but uh, we didn't have time so instead we've stopped here and we'll get back to, to Rancor on a different day. But we are at the Indian and Chinese Cemetery uh, in Ayet, a little bit north um, from the Somme. And this is a cemetery um, that is quite different to sort of what we see uh, in a lot of the British military cemeteries, mostly relating to the headstones. The actual layout of the cemetery is, is very similar to what we're familiar with, similar type of stone and the, the grass very well kept, similar kind of wall design, things like that. But of course the headstones here are different, mainly because they have um, either Indian or Chinese writing on them. So we're going to wander around, we're going to take a look at a couple of them and see what we can see here. So before we take a look at some of the actual men who lay here, let's just quickly touch on the cemetery. So the cemetery here was founded by British fighting troops uh, in 1917, September 1917. Um, Ayet itself saw heavy fighting in March 1918 uh, as part of the German Spring Offensive where the Germans pushed right through this area um, and captured it. But prior to that, this area here would have been behind the British line. And the cemetery here was built for a lot of the Indian and Chinese people who were here working as part of the Labour Corps. Now, by the middle of 1916, there were hundreds of thousands of British troops in this area of France. And they weren't just here to do the fighting. or We certainly didn't need men to just do the fighting. The logistics around that, especially in preparation for something like the Battle of the Somme, involved a huge amount of labour. Men were needed for transportation, for digging, for building, preparations. And in order to try and support with that, in 1916, the British government reached out to places like China in order to try to recruit men who would come here and form part of the Chinese Labour Corps and Indian Labour Corps. They would serve in this area of the Somme. We're a little bit south of Arras here, between kind of Arras and the Somme. Now, of course, these men weren't necessarily uh, involved directly in the fighting, or at least especially the Chinese men weren't. Some of the Indian men were um, involved in the field artillery. And of course, we had Indian units that, that fought, on, uh, fought in the Great War. The Chinese men specifically weren't involved directly in the fighting, but of course they were still subject to violence. Sometimes areas like this came under artillery fire from the Germans, or of course, as we said later in the war, it was captured by the Germans. There's also an awful lot of men who fell sick, whether they were here to fight or here to work as part of the Labour Corps. Things like the Spanish influenza affected hundreds of thousands of men, and so a lot of them died from that as well. So why? So while the men who lay in this uh, cemetery here aren't necessarily battle casualties, they are still victims of the Great War. So here as you come into the cemetery, we have one of the Chinese graves and you can see what I mean. Of course, quite different to what we're used to in the way that we have the Chinese writing at the top, faithful unto death. Now I won't even try to get the Chinese pronunciation correct, but here we have what I guess we're gonna say, Li Shi Kui, a member of the Chinese Labour Corps. And you can see here, if you look at the death date, died April 28, 1919. Of course, that is after the war. So very likely was a victim of the influenza after the war in this area. While still working, men were still here working after the war as part of the cleanup crew and probably a victim of the flu, given the date here. Here we have another grave, very similar. A good reputation endures forever. 
22nd of May 1918, so possibly a victim of the fighting uh, in this area, maybe German artillery or something that came through here as part of the spring offensive that was launched in March 1918 through this area by the Germans. So here we have one of the Indian graves and you can see again slightly different to what we're used to in a lot of the British cemeteries with the writing on the top here. But here we have Gulab Singh who was a member of the Royal Artillery, a driver with the Royal Artillery killed on the 3rd of October 1918, so right towards the end of the war. Here we have another driver with the Royal Artillery on one of the Indian graves. And something interesting here is just to the left of that grave, we have a German grave. Heinrich Vodich, I would, I would guess a German grave here. Now, I won't pretend to know the story of why there is a German grave here. My guess would be that it was either um, a casualty cleared off the battlefield later on, uh, or it could possibly be a prisoner of war who died here. I will try and find out, and if I've got it, I will put it in the comments or the description for the video. As I said, I'm filming this one kind of on the fly, so you might have to forgive me without knowing some of the details uh, of everything going on in this cemetery. So over again amongst the Chinese graves, another slightly interesting one. It looks like it's a, a Chinese grave um, by the name Xinyi Tan. Um, this one, my assumption would be that perhaps they were attached to a French labor corps um, because this one is a uh, Maupol of France, died for France grave from the 17th of July, 1919. Slightly different to some of the other graves next to it. So just like you would get in the British cemeteries, in the back here, you have the plaque. Um, it's a little hard to read, but same as you would get in the British cemeteries. cemeteries. Uh, the land on which this cemetery uh, stands is the free gift of the French people for the perpetuity resting place of those of the Allied armies who fell in the war 1914 to 1918 and are honored here. So it's the same plaque that you would see in the British cemeteries out here on the Western Front. Now there are 80 casualties in this cemetery, 64 of those are identified. Uh, it's not the biggest cemetery in the world, but this is just a small section. Uh, in total in the Great War, um, more than 2,000 Chinese laborers and one and a half thousand Indian laborers were killed while serving out here in the Great War. They were an essential part uh, to the battle efforts here and certainly enabled an Allied victory. Without them, that wouldn't have been possible. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour around the Ayat Indian and Chinese cemetery. Something a bit different. I really enjoyed coming here. I'm glad I made the little trip uh, over here. Uh, to see it. If you want to come here, this is just a bit south of Arras, just north of the Somme, and I really recommend it. Something a bit different to see on the Western Front. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do all the usual YouTube stuff for me. I'm putting it on the screen right here. I appreciate you doing that, and I appreciate you guys watching the video. So thank you very much, and I will see you on the next one.